For example, the meaning of rasa in arts gains another dimension. If in Ayurveda this is pertinent to the quality of taste, that sap, that something which is being recognized and can be tasted as a flavor. In arts, rasa is that what is invoked through direct experience by partaking in a work of art, whatever that work of art happens to be. A musical composition, a theatrical performance, a painting, an architecture, anything that is, anything that invokes has rasa or brings forth rasa. So this is an additional meaning to the term rasa when it comes to the field of arts, when it comes to, let's say, the very topic of how Abhinavagupta ventured as a sage, as a philosopher of his time, into a territory which may seem to be reserved only for those who were dealing with the sphere of life, which has to do with arts. And for that, for that reason, he is also credited with being the great aesthetician of his time. And it is to Abhinavagupta that we are indebted for obliterating the line between the work of art and the work of spirit. Between spiritual, religious experience and aesthetic experience. Not that he invented that. For every one of you who is an artist at heart, and all of you are artists at heart, because that's the quality of Shiva. That's the primal quality of your awareness. More about it later to clarify. But not that he somehow suggested that, well, let's consider that to be so. No. He simply had the audacity to bring that into the dialogues and climates and spiritual circles so as to be reckoned with, not without a healthy dosage of being bashed and criticized by the purists. But that is the experience of all artists anyway. Every aesthetic experience is a religious experience. You play enough violin or piano or drum and you know it. You know the moment from when a mere movement of fingers or blowing the air through the pipe instrument at some point turns into something else. It may be a short-lived, a momentarily experience, and yet that is so. Furthermore, it is not only with regard to the someone who is a performer, someone who is the maker. But even more importantly, it's with regard to anyone who happens to be the spectator. Spectator of the process, as in the works of art, which take place in time, like music is always takes place in time, or something which does not have time as such and experience at once. Painting is a unique form of art because it's experienced at once. It's also the most mysterious to me as a painter because there's no time. Even if you can spend maybe hours in front of those gigantic field paintings of Mark Rothko because they invite that contemplative experience. But the painting is experienced all at once. In fact, this is revisiting this what was just given to the memory of personal encounters during the prolonged stay in Italy some years ago in mid-90s. What I've realized is that in the great works of art, 
There is no need to discover much when it comes to the visual impact. The visual impact is immediate. You don't need to go and like Salvador Dali in. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. These are thrills. Some are tasty. Other are that. Cheap thrills. The great work of art are, on the surface communicates immediately the full impact of its aesthetic delight and the means with which it is achieved of course is experienced now to the degree of the connoisseurship that is available in that respect i'm afraid i may be again called being a snob because this was given to me some years ago by peers in the field with whom i hang out just because i have preference for good tea things good good this good that good this good that and of course if i have a preference for good tea i will always have preference for good art isn't that normal we always look for something which gives us greatest pleasure but how can we extract that pleasure only through the act of repeated experience so therefore we cannot experience pleasure immediately to fullness of it if we are for the first time exposed to mozart or the sound of shakuhachi because mozart is not an easy composer even if we are made believe so he makes things easy does not mean his music is easy he makes melody easy memorable you can whistle it you can whistle mozart much easier than can you whistle bach but it doesn't make music of mozart available to every folk there has to be a repeated experience of that in the same way with everything including some of the variety of french cheeses so well this is very well known some of them are done right pulsing and not to be placed on the table and yet it's in a, in a quiet taste so this is just goes back to that what we hear so you don't lose this rasa is in a quiet taste as well so rasa is what is invoked you see the multivalent meaning of that term so once we have um now equipped with that more or less wide view on what the term rasa here represents we can speak about rasa vada and each specific rasas more particularly whilst at the same time almost remembering not to end up with a limiting understanding or narrowing it to something which oh okay rasa is just taste or rasa is just an emotion as it will become apparent how intricate that term is so back to the rasas right we've got this rasa as a juice sap essence we could even say that anything anything that is there presented has rasa invokes rasa whether this is musical composition or philosophical tractat and it is our job to extract that rasa and let us give now one final sweeping overview life here this embodied existence this embodied existence made out of the experience it's for the sake of extracting the juice every experience is there no matter how perplexing and negative that experience may be experienced in the moment is there to be pressed into something so as to extract the essence of what that experience is so that the life is truly lived which means also fully lived